picture this. You walk into a garage sale, you see the tools, you see the golf clubs, none of it looks good, and in the corner, there's a box full of cassettes. What do you do? Well, if you're like me, you offer the guy five bucks for it all and see what happens. That's what this video is about. I went to a garage sale, bought a box full of cassettes for five bucks. First garage sale stop so far. We've got, this is a Barry Sanders rookie card. It looks to be in mint condition. A Winston dartboard, also amazing condition. A box of old rock tapes, Fleetwood Mac, Michael Jackson. And then these are eight Campbell Joe's matches boxes. They're match boxes, giant tin ones. 30 bucks for all this. I don't know what I'm gonna get. Um, I haven't looked it up yet, but I know these are all good buys. And now we're gonna see what they're worth. <laughs> When you're at a garage sale, so you can't really scan through stuff or look things up because it's kind of impolite. So I said, hey, you know what? Five bucks for all of it. He said, sure, that's fine with me. The trick to dealing with people at garage sales is you have to know that once they bring that stuff into their garage or into their front lawn or their driveway, they don't want to bring it back. So don't negotiate against yourself. Out of the cassettes that I bought, the ones that were valuable were the 80s rock. This one's men at work business as usual. When you're selling cassettes, it might not make sense to look for individual titles or bands. Just know certain genres do well. Classic rock generally does well. If you can find some metal cassettes, those do really well. Rap does really well too. Holiday stuff, not so much. But one I do have in here, Mary Snoopy's Christmas. Check that one out. This is the listing page for Mary Snoopy's Christmas. I'm on audio cassette. You're gonna see it isn't the same Cover, that's fine. As long as it's the same title, that's all that really matters. They don't really do a good job keeping up to date on the discontinued forms of media and their various covers. This is how it should look, kind of, more or less. Uh, the audio, audio CD is really a solid find, but the cassette is not bad either. Buy new, 1987 plus 450 shipping. Buy used, 399 Okay, how the heck am I going to get 15 bucks for this tape then, you're probably thinking. Here's how. Even though there's no sales over the past 30 days, when I pop out to a year, we see that one, two, three sales. Uh, this one occurred right before Christmas. This one in October. This one just after Christmas. What we know from looking at this is that, yes, it will sell probably in six months. It's not going to sell in the summer. If I was really, really concerned about the three cents a month storage fee or whatever it's going to be, I wouldn't send it in until like August or September, but I don't care about that. When we come to this area up here, the buy box, how can my $15 price compete against this and this? This person is not selling at FBA, and so me being the FBA offer, I put it at $14.95, I checked afterwards. That'll almost assuredly uh, get the buy box. What I'm hoping I can do then is, around these times, someone might want to get this cassette really fast. Someone might go to the used one and buy it that way, uh, and they'd be buying mine then at, you know, 15 bucks. They're probably not going to check the used ones. They're not going to do that. They're going to say, okay, I want this now. And again, because of the buy box, I will have this. I've already listed all of these using Inventory Lab. And uh, the total estimated net profit is $145. And then I figure I'll auction these off at a local auction and make two bucks. We'll say, so we'll round up and we'll say 150 best case scenario, estimated profit. What I do when I'm trying to sell something that I'm not really too familiar with is I look at the sales rank charts and I say, okay, after six months, I'll get storage fees. So what is the number that usually, after about three months, these cassettes will sell? And that was around 200 to 300,000 sales rank. I went higher if there was no other FBA offers because the way Amazon works, if you're the only FBA offer, you're much more likely to get the buy box. And on a lot of these high sales rank listings, there is no buy box at all because no one is selling Prime, so it's kind of artificially inflated. What I wanted to do next is kind of go through a few valuable titles that sold on eBay, that sell on Amazon, so you can look out for those when you're at garage sales or thrift stores and uh, hopefully make some more money. I've gone ahead and done an eBay search for cassette under music cassettes, and the filters I applied were United States only, over 40 bucks and anything but new or unspecified condition because that's mostly the kind of things we'll be finding at garage sales. 
Scrolling down, we see Iron Maiden, Nuclear Death. These are both metal. Uh, Time Life Sounds of the 80s, 16 cassette lot. That sells for 50 bucks. The Misfits and uh, some Danzig stuff. All really kind of niche metal bands. Heavy metal thrash, grunge cassette tapes, a lot of 15. It's sold for 41 bucks, free shipping. I'm not going to go through and look up every single cassette because that would take way too long. But just for reference, this one right here, Green Day Dookie, that famous album. The cassette right now on Amazon is selling for $26.92. That's about a $19 FBA profit. 19 minus 41 is 22. So... After that one sale, if you can make 22 bucks on the next 14 tapes, you've broken even. Realistically, I bet the average profit on these is going to be closer to like 8 or $10. So, is there a business model buying tapes off eBay and then selling them individually on Amazon? I'm sure there is. I'm sure lots of people are doing it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment below with your best cassette find, or maybe one you want to find, and watch for this next quick tip from an entrepreneur just like you. Hi everyone, my name is Philip, and I've been an Amazon seller for the last four years. And my advice to you is to give Private Label a try. Everyone knows about Alibaba and how Alibaba has a minimum order quantities and how everybody has to... Uh, negotiate with manufacturers to talk with them and find uh, the best deal and stuff like that and sometimes you even have to order thousands and thousands of units but my advice would be to try aliexpress if you're a smaller or you're a brand new seller and you're looking to do private label with aliexpress you can find products uh, for a little bit more expensive price but you can the best thing is you can take the products you can add them to your carts and even have to negotiate anything with the manufacturer at all what i did is I started ordering 10 units of an item and if I didn't sell any of those 10 units or if any of those 10 units weren't uh, popular, I didn't really lose much at all. I was able to find products that worked for my business and worked for me over the past four years and now I have a fully sustainable business and I'm able to do lots of awesome things, I have lots of free time and it's great. So I would definitely try AliExpress if you're brand new or if you need uh, a little bit more extra cash on top of your thrifting business. Thank you very much to Walter for getting me featured on your channel and I hope that this helps you.